Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. And in today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to use Microsoft Word in just 10 minutes. Now this is a beginner's guide, and if you wanna see something more intermediate or advanced, let us know in the comment section below. Now if you're looking to pick up a copy of Microsoft Office or other Microsoft software, be sure to check out Indigo Software, links in the description, you can save a ton of money. So without further ado, let's begin. Now we're on the Mac again today. I'm gonna to open up my Finder. We're gonna to navigate to Applications, Microsoft Word, and we'll double click to open it up. Now, whether you're on older or newer versions of Microsoft Word, or if you're on a PC, uh, the tips in this video are still mostly gonna be applicable to you as the program itself is very, very similar across different versions and platforms. So when you open up Microsoft Word, we're gonna be met with different templates. Uh, so things like calendars, resumes, you can click more templates if you want to browse through uh, a little bit more of these and you can also search for something that you are specifically looking for. Uh, but in the case of today's tutorial, we're going to go back to our home and we're going to create a blank document. So we'll double click that and we will put this in full screen. Now once you open a blank page in Microsoft Word, uh, you're going to see these things up here which are called tabs. So these tabs each have their ribbon. This is the ribbon right here. And the ribbon is relevant to whatever the tab is titled. And within each ribbon, you'll have different groups separated by these little lines right here. So groups will put similar things together. Table, you have picture shapes, icons, all under the insert tab. So these all relate to insert and within each group, they all kind of relate to each other. And so different tabs will give you different ribbons, different tools, etc. And for now, we're going to stay on the home page. The home page consists of the most commonly used tools, um, such as highlighter, bold, italic, underline. You've got your font and um, font size and basic tools like that that you will probably use on a regular basis. Now, another thing to notice when navigating is you'll see a lot of different drop down menus. So example for the underline, you see different types of underlines. If I go to insert, you'll see that smart art gives me a list of uh, categories here. So these drop down menus are basically expanding upon whatever the tool itself says and it just gives you lots of different options. Now I want this page to be a little bit bigger, it'll be easier for me to see it and navigate through it. So I'm just using this little slider on the bottom right, this is a zoom slider, and about there looks good. Now me personally, I like to work with the ruler turned on. Um, you can change the dimensions of your page or you can just see them, which is pretty nice. So we'll go over to the view tab. And within this ribbon, we see a ruler. So we can just check that on. And now we have that ruler at the top. Now, if you're a student writing a document for school, um, you might have to put certain information such as your name, um, date, and class in the upper right-hand corner, uh, sometimes in the upper left-hand corner. So in the case that we wanna go upper right, I wanna go back to the home. Again, it's those common tools. And I'm gonna align this to the right, which is this little icon here. It says align right once you hover over it. And I'll enter in my name, enter my company, and I'll enter my email address. Format may look something like that if you're a student, and so that's just an easy way to, to get there. Uh, now I'm gonna press enter to create space. Press enter one more time, and then I'm gonna use this little button right here to center the text. And now we're gonna type our title. So we're gonna call this 10 Steps to Cinematic Composition. So we've typed in our title, and I actually decided I want to use a different font for the entire document. I'm gonna press a keyboard shortcut, Command or Control if you're on Windows, and the letter A. This is gonna select everything on the page. We're gonna change our font to Times New Roman, and font size 11. Now I wanna select just the title so I can make this look more like a title. Now I can manually bold, um, you know, bold is right here, italicize, underline, I can do any of that or change the size. Uh, but it's really easy if you just use some of their preset options up here. Again, we're on the home tab and I'm gonna click on title and then I'm gonna press that centered button again. And this is gonna choose um, whichever font is default for this style. So I'm just gonna go back and change this back to my old font, Times New Roman. And now I have a title. So I'm gonna enter again and enter one more time. And now we're ready to start typing on our document. All right, so I typed in a very basic um, introduction, two sentences, and let's say I want to move down the page. So it's not gonna let you do that. Uh, instead, you have to press the Enter key. This will let you create some space between this and your main body paragraph, um, and then Delete will go back. So this is an easy way to just navigate through. 
based on how you want to lay out your page. I can always use the clicker to go back up, click in between words to edit things. Uh, so that's a really easy way to do that as well. Now let's say that right after this short introduction, I wanna add a picture visual element to kind of help better articulate my idea here. We're gonna move to the insert tab and then under pictures, you'll have a drop down menu and I can either choose one from my computer um, or the easiest thing to do that's very convenient in this case is to select online pictures. And this is gonna pull up the internet using Bing, and I'm gonna search for cinematography. So I'm looking for something more like this, something like a cinematic um, image example. You can really search anything that's relevant to what you're trying to portray. Uh, but this looks good to me, or even this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and press insert. Now, right off the bat, this is definitely not exactly where I want it. Uh, and you can see that it's not, it's not letting me drag um, and place it where I want it. So if you make a mistake like this, easy keybind is Command Z. That's the undo uh, keybind. You can also press this little back button right here, which is the undo button. And I'm gonna start by just sizing this down. I dragged it in the corner, any corner, and just size the image down. Again, I still cannot move it. Now, if you wanna be able to move your picture and change how it's placed, um, we're gonna right click and wrap text is gonna give us a variety of options uh, to be able to change how we're editing this. Behind text or in front of text will allow you to essentially free move this picture around the document. So either one of those two is fine. We're gonna select that. And now when I go to drag this around, I can just put it right here and it's gonna stay right there. Uh, so that's really nice because this is definitely more like what I'm trying to achieve here. If you notice when I click on the picture, it pulls up the picture format tab, which was not previously there. And this is gonna give us all sorts of options to edit this picture. So we could change the transparency of it. Uh, there's a bunch of different artistic and color effects, color corrections. There's a ton of different things that you can do here. So if you want to edit the picture um, from how it looks stock, you can go through some of these different menu options and change up the image to your desired look. And another useful tool is you have a crop tool over here. So if I select the image, I can crop it to my desired ratio. Uh, let's say you want it to be not quite as long or not quite as tall, that's a very easy way to do that. Now if we go back to the insert tab, there's also a lot of different options uh, that you can choose from here. You could do icons, shapes, uh, smart art, and there's media so that you can import video. Uh, there's just a ton of different options here that you could explore if you're looking to do something other than just a picture. Now another thing you might wanna do is add a text box. This would be useful for writing a photo caption if you wanted to explain what's going on in this photo. So we're on the insert tab. We're gonna select text box and then we'll do draw text box. And from here, I'm just gonna draw a little square in the bottom right of this picture. And here I could write in a caption to describe the photo. And it's gonna let me move this text box around, which is super, super helpful in cases like this uh, because it'll be a little bit more difficult to do that with just line typing. So for now, I'm just gonna remove this. And in this case, I would continue to type out my document until I was complete. And once it's complete, there's actually a couple of different things that you can do to better this document and here's what you can do. So we're going over to the review tab and one thing that is super helpful is to check the spelling and grammar. So I'm gonna intentionally misspell a couple of things here and then I'm gonna go over here to the top left and select spelling and grammar. And Word is gonna suggest corrections that it notices in your page. So for here, I'll press change to cinematic because that is indeed what I was trying to type. And then composition, again, it's the first one that's automatically highlighted, press change. You could also do change all if you don't want to go through every single word that's misspelled. Uh, but I like to review um, what it's picking up here just to make sure. So we'll select change. And now it's going to say that it's complete. So we know our spelling and grammar is good to go. And if you had a specific word count for an essay that you were writing, you can also see that right here. So it'll tell you pages, words, characters, and so on. Also within this review tab, you have things like thesaurus and you have various other tools here that can help you refine and make your work better. Now let's say you're required to have your essay double spaced. So I'm going back to my home page here. I'm gonna click my cursor in and command A to select all. And then this little button right here is line spacing. So I'd simply just switch that to 2.0. And now this would be double space and this would be the correct format based on my requirements. So definitely take a look at all these different tools here. Uh, you've got a highlighter here if you wanted to go through and highlight different words. You can also drop that down to change the color. So there's a ton of different tools that are useful in Word, especially on the homepage. I'd recommend that you just take time to explore these different tools and what they do and how you can use them. So I'm complete with my document and I wanna save it. How do we do that? So I'm gonna go up to my computer 
and we're gonna press file on the computer. So this isn't a tab that's within Word, it's within your computer. And we're gonna press file. And the first thing that I would recommend that you do is save as. This is gonna save all of your work in a Word document format. And this is gonna let you open it up and continue exactly where you left off anytime that you wanna do that. And so we'll name the document and make sure that you select a location uh, just so that you're sure where it is if you're ever looking for it. And we'll press save. So this is safely saved and I don't have to worry about losing this work that I've made here. Uh, but what if you want this in a PDF format or other format? Well, we're gonna go back up to file. And since we're on Mac, we actually don't have an export button underneath file. And so if you want that PDF, the easiest way to do that is share and send PDF. If you're on Windows, you'll have an export PDF option, uh, so just be aware of that. But in this case, we can send PDF. But in this case, uh, we're gonna do share and send PDF. And if I clicked on this, it would pull up a little email box where I could email it to myself as a PDF. From there, I could download it. So that concludes today's video. We really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, we'd really appreciate it. Subscribe, like, comment. Again, if you wanna check out Microsoft software, uh, check out Indigo Software, links in the description to save a lot of money. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.